on a Wednesday evening during the season of Lent. And as we come to our final Wednesday service, we are going to look at the four cups of wine at the Passover. At the Passover. Now, as, we, as I mentioned before, the, the Passover meal kind of developed over 1,500 years or 1,400 years or so. And it wouldn't have been at the very first Passover, but by the time of Jesus, there were cups of wine. And, um, and every cup of wine has a meaning. And the cups of wine are so important that rabbis and teachers said that the community had to make sure that the poor had enough so that they could have these four cups of wine. And one rabbi says you even have to sell the shirt off your back in order to get enough wine for these four cups of wine. So they're kind of an important part of the Passover meal. And so we're going to be looking at them tonight. And one of, and I maybe I could mention this in my sermon, but I'll mention it now. And they could be, I will. Every 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 um, every cup of wine has a Bible verse, but they could be the, called the I will cups because God makes promises to each and every one of them. So, with, um, so that's going to be our focus tonight, the four cups of wine, and we begin with our first hymn. <laughs> symbolizes the coming of the Messiah as the light of the world. 
We welcome Messiah's presence among us as the candles are lit. together. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You sanctify us by your word and allow us to kindle these lights. Bless our homes and our dear ones for the warmth and peace of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Why is this night different from all other nights? The second cup is the cup of deliverance. The third cup is the cup of redemption. The fourth cup is the cup of hope. The each of us celebrates who we are as God's holy people. We are his people who have been delivered from the redeemed by his son. Once we were slaves in Egypt, but the Lord our God delivered us with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. Once we were slaves of Satan and sin. The Lord our God delivered us with his arms on the cross. Had not the Holy One, may he be praised, brought our fathers out of Egypt, then we and our children and our children's children would still be enslaved. Had not the Holy One, may he be praised, brought us out of sins, then we and our children and our children's children would still be enslaved by the devil and destined for eternal death. Blessed are you, our God, ruler of the world, creator of the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, our God, ruler of the world. You have chosen us from among all people, exalting us and sanctifying us with your word. In your love, you have given us service of rest, peace of gladness, and seasons of joy. You have given us this Sabbath night and this festival season of Lent as a reminder of our own exodus from slavery. Dear Father, you have chosen us from all peoples, consecrating us to your service, giving us the Sabbath, a sign of your love and favor, and the festival, a time of gladness and joy. Blessed are you who sanctifies the Sabbath, who sanctifies your baptized people, and the festival of holy communion. Amen. I love the Lord. For he heard my cry. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. The Lord has saved me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death. My eyes from tears, my feet from suffering. That I may walk before the Lord. In the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm I said, Everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord? For all his goodness to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord. It is the death of his faithful servants. Truly I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. 
I will sacrifice a thank offering to you. And you call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord. In the of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And then call on the name of the Lord. Please be seated. And the first reading is from Exodus, the sixth chapter. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Because of the mighty hand, because of my mighty hand, he will let them go. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out of his country. God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they lived as aliens. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading from Luke, the fifth chapter. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who belonged to their sect, complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. And be to God. In the third reading from Luke, the 22nd chapter. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old. But now in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son.
But not only the salvation and feasting go hand in hand during the feast of the Passover, it also was part of Israel's life. Because after they crossed the Red Sea and ended up at the bottom of Mount Sinai, God made a covenant with the people of Israel. And after he made a covenant with the people of Israel, God called Moses and the 70 elders of the people of Israel up on top of the mountain, and they ate, and they drank, and they feasted in the presence of God. And part of the covenant that, they, that God made with them, and they made with God, was feast. That, they were, that Israel was going to keep feast. And these feasts that they were to keep were feasts of salvation. He gave them the feast of unleavened bread. He gave them the feast of weeks at planting time. He gave them the feast of Pentecost at harvest time. He gave them the feast of tabernacles where people would go out into the desert and, and, and live in tents for an entire week. And each one was a salvation feast. And, the, and to make a little bit of a fun, each one had a little bit different flavor to them. But they all had a unique unique. Um, perspective or bringing on something unique about the salvation that God had brought to them but at the end this is what the salvation boiled down to is that they were God's people and he was their God who had rescued them. Salvation and feasting went together. And so it's no, no surprise that when Jesus came God in the flesh when he came to bring salvation, then he began eating and drinking and feasting. He was at a wedding, eating and drinking and feasting. And after that wedding, what happened? People believed it. He ate and he drank and he feasted with Zacchaeus. And what does he say to Zacchaeus? But today salvation has come to your house. He ate and he drank with Mary and Martha. He ate and he drank with tax collectors and sinners. Jesus came to this world bringing salvation, so he ate, he drank, and he feasted. And so now, he comes to the end of his ministry. His earthly ministry, I should say, when he's walking around. It's Monday, Thursday. The night before he brings salvation to the world by hanging on the cross. And what does he do? He feasts at the, the feast of the Passover. And there, at that feast, there was roast lamb, there was bitter herbs, there was fresh baked unleavened bread, there was that apple dish, the harosap, and there was wine. There was actually four cups of wine. Now, if it, if, if it seems like four cups of wine or too many cups of wine, know that each cup was a cup of salvation. And in the psalm that we just said, he said, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Cups of salvation, each one. And when it comes to salvation, there's more than enough, always. More than what we need. There's my cup runneth over kind of salvation. And so each one of these cups of salvation was, was at the proper time, in the new liturgy of the Passover, it was lifted up with a blessing. And then with each cup there was a Bible verse, and with each cup there was a prayer of thanksgiving. And the reason why that there were four cups is because of the four I wills in the reading from Exodus we just had. And here are the four I wills that are promises from God. I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their 
from being slaves to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you to be my own people, and I will be your God. So each one has a name. Each one has a Bible reading. And so this is kind of the way I, I think it happens in my, in my way at the Last Supper. Jesus strips to the waist, washes his disciples' feet, puts his clothes back on, and takes his place as host at the, at the front of the table. And then he takes his first cup, and he, and he says, I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. Now, this cup, this cup is called the cup of sanctification. And that's, an, that's interesting to me. It was, it's because we all know what sanctify, right? We learned that in confirmation. Sanctify means to be made holy. And you don't really see it there, I bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. But you know what it is? It is it sanctified. The sanctified means to be set apart. And what God was doing was he was bringing his people out of Egypt to set them apart. And so they were set apart as God's people. And so you can almost, you can almost imagine that Jesus, as he recites those words, I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians, how he himself had set Israel apart from the very beginning. How they would have been set apart for him before they were ever born. How they had been set apart while they were still in Sarah's womb. How he had set them apart even before they were a great nation. How he had set them apart. And that is why he, along with the Father and the, and, the, and the Holy Spirit, had brought them out of Egypt so that he could be their God and so that they could be set apart as his holy people. Now, as Jesus lifts up the first cup, it's not the cup it is not the cup he used for communion. But it comes into communion a little bit because he kind of puts that verse into communion. For their communion, as we drink that wine, we are set apart. We are sanctified, made holy. He rescues us so that we can be his people. He rescues us as he sets a table in the presence of our enemies. In the cup of wine that Jesus will give us to drink, he says, I free you from your bondage to sin, to Satan, and death. I set you apart to be God's holy people. Well, the Passover meal continues, and as the Passover meal continues, Jesus and his disciples, they eat the roasted lamb, the unleavened bread, and then, I can move this one over here, and then Jesus takes the second cup. This, is, this also is not the cup of communion, by the way. This is the cup of deliverance. And he says, I will deliver you from being slaves, or I will deliver you from their bondage, is what he says. He speaks those words, and then you know what he says? After he says that, it's part of the liturgy that he speaks the ten plagues. I will deliver you. A cup of deliverance. I will deliver you. God delivers. The people of Israel have been slaves for 400 years. Years. And know what they were unable to do in those 400 years? Deliver themselves. Rescue themselves. But here comes God, and God delivers them with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. They were delivered by the hand of God. And so, the second cup, like I said, is not part of the communion cup, but it is part of the communion cup. Because we can't save ourselves any more than the Israelites can save themselves. We can't deliver ourselves from our sins and death any more than the Israelites could save themselves from Egypt. So, in our communion cup, is Jesus delivering us. 
But the deliverance cup has judgment with it. After he says, I will deliver you from the, their bondage, the ten plagues are read. The Nile, the blood, the plague of frogs, flies, the locusts, the boils, the plague of darkness, the death of the firstborn, hailstones, all that are. God did just deliver his people. Judgment on Egypt was needed. Jesus doesn't just deliver us. Judgment is needed. There's wages to be paid. The wages of sin is death. And so, after the meal is over, Jesus goes out to the Garden of Gethsemane, finds that big rock, and he prays, Father, if it be your will, take this cup of suffering from me. But not my will, but thy will be done. Take this cup of wages of the whole world's sin from me. And not my will, but thy will be done. It was, take this cup of place. All the plagues that are in the world, deliver me. But if it be your will, then not my will, but thy will be done. But it, and it was his father's will for his son to take that cup and drink it and drink it to the full. So that, yes, as we drink the cup at communion, it's in there too, that we are delivered from all evil. After the group had finished eating their supper, Jesus took the third cup. This is the cup of redemption. And Jesus was supposed to read, I will drink, I will deliver you, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And after this cup, he was supposed to read the, the mighty acts of God of delivering the Israelites as God took them across the Red Sea, as he parted the Red Sea. I do not know if Jesus ever got to that part or not. Because what Jesus says next over the third cup, the cup of redemption, changes everything. He takes this cup and he says, drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This is often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As the disciples heard that, they would have been shocked. First of all, because Jews were not allowed to drink blood. And here Jesus is saying, this is my blood, drink my blood. And second of all, he's changed everything. Because it was always the lamb at the first Passover that had the blood on the doorsteps, on the, on the doorposts. That, that was the Lamb of God that saved them. Now Jesus is changing everything. He is saying, He is the true Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's saying that He is the true Lamb of God that takes away their sin, and that He is there, the one redeeming them, buying them back. He's paying the price. He's saying, I am the Lamb of God. I pay the price for your sin as I shed my blood, as I pour out my blood for you. Drink of it, all of you. And, as shocked as they were, they all drank from the cup. The cup of redemption. That Jesus says, this is my blood poured out for you. Drink of it, all of you. He still gives us this cup. Every time we come up there, it is the feast of salvation. It is his blood shed for you. We drink that blood poured out for us. One more cup. The final cup. Now, this cup, this cup as you look, as you look through things, you know this cup has several names, but I'm calling it the cup of hope. That's, that's one of the names. Sometimes it's called the, the, the Hallel Cup because at this cup there would have been songs sung. There would have been songs sung. The Hallel songs. 
we get hallelujah, a lot of songs would have been sung during this cup. But it's the cup of hope. Jesus puts that into the cup that we drink at communion as well. It's the cup that everything's going to, we have hope. We always have hope in Christ because the words that would have been said is, I will take you to be my people. Every time we drink that cup, Jesus is always saying, I will take you to be my people. My Father is taking you to be my people. Well, there it is. Those are the four cups, and now's the time, I know you can drink the cup now. And it, it, as you drink that cup, uh, and as you drink, I'm just going to go ahead and remind you what each one of the four cups of salvation meant. As you drink it, here's the first one. I will free you. I will deliver you. I will redeem you. I will take you to be my people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. We will now gather the offering. Against us, and give us not into 
temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. <coughs> the Almighty, merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Cinnamon rolls, caramel rolls, fruit, juice. Yes. Yeah. So, so plan on plan on that. This kind of going to be a fundraiser as they head to um, Houston. Is that right? They're heading to Houston for the youth gathering this coming summer. So, plan on that for Sunday, and then next week, plan on coming to Holy Week and celebrating all the wonderful events our Lord did as He saved us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all this night. Thank you.